breaking news. Uh, none other than former House Representative uh, from Texas, Beto O'Rourke, has made his announcement that he is out of the presidential race. And you know what? This is really shocking. Well, no, I'm not shocked at all because he didn't really stand a chance. I mean, let's face it. I mean, it was corporate media. They were making him seem out to, to be like the next Obama. They were trying to make him the next big thing. Of Corporate media was trying to do everything that they could to um, make him this number one person. And they failed miserably. He was on the cover of Time magazine. And let's face it. If we have to look at Better Work's history, I mean, in 2018, he was, quote unquote, a progressive. I know everyone holds your breath on that one, because as soon as he won the general election, he started backpedaling away from a lot of the progressive agendas and he lost to Ted Cruz for the Senate seat. Uh, Senate seat. I screwed that up. <laughs> We're live, folks. Uh, but it, but at the end of the day, I mean, he lost to Ted Cruz, the guy who lost to Donald Trump. It really says a lot about his candidacy. And, you know, what was his message? I mean, it was really hard to understand it. And A table know, to be stood on for every American. Yeah, I guess so. Standing on top of tables. And, of course, he does have uh, at least his final announcements. Um, in the spirit, I am announcing that my service to my country will not be as candidate or as a nominee. Uh, this is from the BBC. And Better O'Rourke was basically struggling to really gain, like, a a lot of attention and he was eventually he was replaced by Pete Buttigieg and we did a coverage on mm -hmm. that some time ago and you know it, while, while we look at his candidacy I'm very curious to see who he might throw his support behind now I'm going to assume and I think kind of predict correctly he might go for an establishment candidate however I've got two positive things to say about better work I know I'm surprised as you guys are number one when the media was asking about ben, uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, heart condition and whether or not he was still fit to be in the presidential race, Beto O'Rourke came to his defense. And then when Hillary Clinton made these false accusations towards Representative Tulsi Gabbard, whether Tulsi Gabbard was a Russian asset, uh, Beto O'Rourke was quick to say, no, there's no proof behind it. These are false allegations, and it's it's wrong for Secretary uh, Hillary Clinton to even say these things. So, I mean, hey, two positive things to say about Beto O'Rourke, but let's see where, where it comes out in the long run. Paul and Daniel, I know you got some I think added. at this point, uh, any candidate would not want the support of Beto O'Rourke. I think he's toxic at, at this point. Uh, just in a little bit of a retrospective, don't forget that uh, a lot of the reason he lost his Senate race to Ted Cruz and a lot of the negative uh, coverage that he's been getting throughout the Democratic primary is in large part due to the fact uh, that uh, Dave Sirota had such great reporting around his political campaign contributions, the amount of money he's been receiving from the petroleum and oil and gas industries, yeah, and how right he's behind, voted. Uh, uh, Ted Cruz. Right, yeah, he's voted very, very consistently with them. And so the skateboarding, hand-waving ta table stander just is not someone that anyone wants support from or cares about. So good riddance, I wish you the best, Beto. So actually, I would even say that uh, someone who stands on tables uh, needs support. I mean, almost by definition. Uh, I, so Beto, incredibly corrupt, took so much money from oil and gas. We've talked about this. Uh, I remember back when like TYT was promoting him before like anyone knew who he was to give uh, not to throw any shade on them because they you know back then it made sense they had to beat Ted Cruz. But you know, it's just a lot of these candidates. The more exposure they get, the more sunlight that uh, uh, disinfects the more corrupt they look. Yeah. And that's who Beto was. He had a persona of, be like Paul said, I'm going to be on a skateboard. I'm going to do this. Look at I'm a cool kid. Look but, at me dropping the yeah. F-bomb. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. And so then, but Kit did a wonderful video a few months ago. Um, one of our bigger videos, yeah, actually. It was, it was the fall of uh, Better Work and Rise of Pete Buttigieg. And, but also there was another video that I did, too, mm -hmm. where, you know, it questionable amounts of uh, funds that he was getting in his campaign and perhaps its relation to his 2018 uh, run for the uh, United States uh, Senate against Ted Cruz. And so there's a lot of investigation to look into that. Now, I mean, let's face it, what role he will play in this election cycle, Paul, you're absolutely right. He is toxic. But then again, who knows where, where his support will go behind, but I think it'll be centrist. So I think that there's two, two parts to him. He has some money. Um, so someone's going to want him for money. And if we say who wants him for money, well, I think Biden's really desperate for money right now, and he would probably cut a deal. <clears throat> um, but I think really what it comes down to is, again, that video that Kit did, we predicted that Beto got completely replaced by Buttigieg. He was the younger, better version. He was, as we called, we have uh, Uncle Joe, 
uh, cousin, cousin Joe, cousin Joe, which is Beto, and then nephew Joe, which is Buttigieg, because they basically all have the same neoliberal personalities. So we just lost an uncle today that no one really knew they had or cared about. A cousin, a cousin, a cousin. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you it's go. already. I'm already. I've already lost it on there. So, um, Beto, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna send you out. We have you in our board. We have one image of you. Um, and uh, that slot's going to get freed up pretty soon. Yep. So uh, here's to Beto. Goodbye, Beto. The hand waver himself. You know, I think I'm going to cry a little because we're not going to open on my stork anymore. <laughs> don't worry, he's going to sell my cousin. Yeah, so yeah, worry, this guys. story, Whatever. we have a story at the beginning and a story at the end, which is going to be covering uh, Warren. I, I don't want to belabor this point yes. too much, but I think it's worth pointing out Um it took us a minute. It took the media a minute. It mm -hmm. took progressives and lefties a minute because he came out saying a lot of things that we were right. like, hey, we that's the beginning. Yes, yeah. those are things that we like to well, hear. Well, hey, we this guy seems legit. And then it took, it really did take David Sirota to be like, he takes gobs of money from the petroleum industry, guys, from the oil and gas right. lobbies. Well, see, we, we talked about this actually, especially as soon as that information was starting to come out, especially when he was backpedaling away from his progressive agenda when we were still on the radio. And Paul, you covered that story excellently. And that was, that was like when we were on radio and we, we were seeing through the bs through better o'rourke i mean that was like but what that tells me yeah. is people know what we want to hear people know yeah like the things that voters want and the things that are popular um and are willing to pretend that they support those things to get favor without actually supporting you know, those. You know I'm what? Say, I'll say one thing before Kid says yeah. this one thing. I think that there's one comment that I think I didn't think of and actually makes a lot of sense that uh, Ben and my stork endorses uh, Buttigieg. I think that actually would be a natural pairing. That would be. But you know what? I think my final quote will actually beat yours. <laughs> this is from Imagine 07018. Beto is deado. Okay. I think that's a, <laughs> there we go. a good place to end it. <laughs>